right now, Democrats are in a world of hurt. They're in serious, serious trouble. And this has led President Biden back to the campaign trail. Now, a lot of Democrats are not real fond of this because the fact is, the more people see Joe Biden out there, the less they want to vote for the Democrats. I talked about yesterday the fact that presidents, usually their party in midterm elections gets shellacked. But whatever hopes the party has generally do ride on the president being able to stump and, and draw up some sort of support, however feeble, for his own party. The problem is that Joe Biden is so unpopular, no one wants to be seen with him. And every time he speaks, he actually embarrasses both himself and his party. And so people are very upset with him on the Democratic side of the aisle today for having done what he did yesterday. So Joe Biden, in a fit of pique, basically, decided that he was going to recapitulate his Independence Hall speech where he declared that half of Americans were super mega, ultra duper mega and, and that they were a threat to democracy. He decided that he was going to speak at Washington's Union Station. Apparently, they had to clear a homeless encampment in order to make this happen. So the, the optics of this one are pretty weak. I remember when Union Station was really kind of a beautiful gem in the heart of Washington, D.C. Now, apparently, it's been taken over by the homeless since so they actually had to clear the place. According to the New York Post, conservatives ripped President Biden's choice of Washington's Union Station as a venue for one of his final pre-midterm speeches, deriding it as a ghost town frequented by yelling psychos, homeless people, and drug addicts. The statue-filled marble-covered transit hub has fallen on hard times since the onset of COVID-19 in March 2020, with many stores in the terminal and adjacent shopping mall shuttering and ever reopening. Washington Times national politics correspondent Susan Ferecchio tweeted Wednesday, President Biden plans to deliver an address Tuesday night from Union Station in D.C. This once thriving shopping center is now practically a ghost town. I took this photo of empty stores on Saturday. In August, even Starbucks announced it was closing its location inside Union Station due to rising crime and drug use inside the store. When Starbucks is shutting down stores in one of the busiest, busiest transit hubs in the United States, you know that things are really, really bad. And this is exactly where Joe Biden chose to speak, which is bizarre. D.C. actually cleared the tent city from in front of Union Station. They, they'd apparently left it there for years on end. But now that Joe Biden was speaking there, it was important to clear it out. So again, none of the optics here work for Joe Biden. Meanwhile, Karine Jean-Pierre, world's most untalented press secretary, was asked whether Joe Biden's speech, which was going to be on the theme of whether democracy was in threat, whether that was really just a Democratic get out the vote effort. Because if those two things are the same, if we are just days from an election, which we are, and if Joe Biden is looking at the polls, which he is, and if he sees the incoming red wave, which is not going to be a wave, it's going to be a tsunami. If he sees that, and his final case is, we have to save democracy, that naturally implies if you vote for his opponents, then this means that you are a threat to democracy. So she was asked about this. She said, no, 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 that's not what he means. It just means that everyone's vote should count. Okay, well, if, if all that this meant was that everyone's vote should count, then why precisely is Joe Biden giving the speech? What exactly is the purpose of the speech? Obviously, it has to do with the campaign. Obviously, it has to do with the timing of the campaign. And so the not particularly subtle message here is vote for me or democracy ends. Vote for my party or democracy is a threat. Karine Jean-Pierre denied all of that in the least convincing fashion. Thank you, Karine. Following up on your comment that there's an alarming number of Republicans who are saying they're not going to accept election results, does that mean President Biden thinks it is a threat to democracy if somebody votes Republican? No, that's a, that's a ridiculous question. No. Why is that a ridiculous question? Because American people should have their right to vote for whomever they want. The voting is a sacred right. It is something that the president wants to protect at, at, at every turn. And he has done that. He's taken actions to protect the right to vote. And, uh, and you see uh, Democrats in Congress also doing the work to protect the right to vote. OK, so she's overtly denying that this is about getting the Democratic votes out there or getting people to vote for Democrats, which makes the timing super duper weird. Also, when you hear Karine Jean-Pierre out there stumping for the idea that election denial is tantamount to treason, it is important to remember that Karine Jean-Pierre is an election denier. It is amazing that nobody in the press room, aside from Peter Ducey, is going to ever ask her this question, but it happens to be a fact. April 2nd, 2020, quote, reminder, Brian Kemp stole the gubernatorial election from Georgians and Stacey Abrams. That was like two years ago. And can we stop pretending now that election denial is a phenomenon on only one side of the political aisle? But that, of course, is the predicate for everything that Joe Biden was intending on doing. We'll get to more on this in just one second. First, what if I told you you could make those fine lines, forehead wrinkles, dark spots, and even under eye bags disappear? Sounds amazing, right? Well, it's not too good to be true because you can make GenuCell skincare a part of your daily routine. GenuCell has sold over 1 million products to both men and women. The reviews speak for themselves. Samantha writes, I love GenuCell skincare. I've used it all over my face, under my eyes. It cleared up the dry flakiness, even reduced my forehead lines. Someone even asked if I had work done. Susan wrote, I've been using GenuCell for a couple months. The puffiness around my eyes is gone. Even the crow's feet and small lines have disappeared. 
women in my family have been using GenuCell. I, I used GenuCell years ago. It really worked for me. My wife then started using it. My mom started using it. GenuCell uses a proprietary base with clinical levels of botanical extracts, which come together to yield amazing results. GenuCell products are natural, cruelty-free, and made in the United States. Take advantage of GenuCell's early Black Friday sale going on right now and get their most popular products package for over 70% off. You'll get two months worth of their bestsellers, plus their hyaluronic acid serum free with your purchase. Take advantage of this amazing deal right now by going to GenuCell.com slash Shapiro. Use code Shapiro for an extra 10% off. That's GenuCell.com slash Shapiro. GenuCell.com slash Shapiro. And in the run-up to Joe Biden's speech, the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas was, was trotted out on national TV to talk about political violence and how it was largely being driven by Republican political rhetoric. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas spoke exclusively with ABC's Pierre Thomas about the current threat environment. How toxic is this moment and how concerned are you? There are uh, a number of um, forces that are fueling a violent extremism, ideologies of hate, false narratives, anti-government sentiment, personal grievances. Okay, um, you may have noticed that when it comes to political violence, this is not one side of the political aisle. Brett Kavanaugh's family was threatened. I know that was wildly downplayed by the media in a way that Paul Pelosi's beating simply was not. Last night, the GOP New Hampshire Senate hopeful Don Balduck, who, as I mentioned before, right now appears like he could knock out Maggie Hassan in the Senate. Apparently, according to the New York Post, he dodged a punch from a would-be assailant before stepping on stage to debate Senator Maggie Hassan. He was apparently unharmed. The individual who attempted to assault the Senate candidate was arrested, according to his campaign. And that, he's not the only Republican candidate who's been physically attacked during this particular race. Lee Zeldin was physically attacked on stage by a man carrying what appeared to be a sharp implement. And he fought the guy off and was uninjured, thankfully. So again, if we're living in a climate of political violence, what you would suggest is that that's probably an all sides problem. And perhaps one of the things you would do to bring down the temperature is stop suggesting that your political opposition is literally going to end the republic if you vote for them. But Joe Biden decided to go in a different direction. So last night, he goes out and he gives this speech. Joe Biden, he does not have the energy. He is not with it anymore. His, his version of this speech at Independence Hall was different optically, right? He, he was flanked by Marines in the background. It was very militaristic and almost fascistic. It was very bizarre in terms of the imagery. He had a, a big red like blood red background. He was very angry, shouty, he was clenching his fists to the sky. This was Grandpa Joe trying to feebly wheedle you into voting Democrat. It was a very low energy speech. The president didn't seem like he could keep it together for much of the evening. I don't know whether he was physically tired or what the story was, but he just, he did not seem like uh, very enthusiastic about a speech that he himself called. Instead of doing it in front of a crowd, he did it in kind of a small room it felt like a much more minor speech, but this was meant to be his closing pitch. So Joe Biden's closing pitch seemed to be, Paul Pelosi got hit with a hammer. January 6th happened. If you don't elect me and my party, there'll be more Paul Pelosi's getting hit with hammers by apparently crazy, nude, quasi-homeless people who buy into conspiracy theories online, but also wave around LGBT and Black Lives Matter flags. That's going to happen if you elect Republicans. And also there'll be more January 6th if you elect Republicans, or they just won't count your vote at all. It'll be like Stalin. They'll take all your ballots and they'll throw them in the river. This was Joe Biden's closing pitch. He started off, of course, by mentioning the Paul Pelosi attack, which, again, the opportunism, the political opportunism here is pretty stunning. Democrats have a habit of doing this sort of thing. After Gabby Giffords was shot, Barack Obama flew to Arizona where he gave an anti-gun rally. After Paul Wellstone died in a plane crash, Democrats basically held a giant political rally ripping on Republicans. You don't tend to see this sort of stuff as much from Republicans, this particular kind of opportunism. After Steve Scalise was shot, you didn't get Republicans en masse doing big rallies, talking about how Democratic rhetoric had led to Steve Scalise getting shot. You just didn't see that. It, it, it's not, it, it seems almost entirely located on one side of the political aisle, maybe because Democrats actually believe that their opponents are evil, whereas Republicans tend to believe that their opponents are wrong or did until very recently. Maybe this will change in the near future. Maybe because both sides now see their opponents as evil rather than wrong. You'll see more of the, somebody on my side got attacked. It must be the evil people on the other side who are, who are to blame more broadly speaking. All right, guys, the rest of the show is continuing now. You're not going to want to miss it. We're going to get into the latest Federal Reserve interest rate hike. We'll also get into Vice President Harris being Vice President Harris and the precriminations against Joe Biden begin. If you're not a member, click the link in the description and join us.